following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. From New York, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. Johnny's guest host tonight is Woody Allen. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severinsen and the NBC Orchestra, inviting you to join Woody and his guests, Bob Hope, James Coco, Dr. Irwin Stillman, Kay Hart, and Chief Red Fox. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Woody Allen! How are you, my pal? Welcome back. Thank you very much. You have not... You've been neglecting us. I thought you'd given us up. No. It's up for uh, the movie world. You've just kind of disappeared from view. We haven't seen you. When was the last time you were here? Uh, well, I have... This week has been... I've done a lot of television, but prior to this week, I was off. The last thing that I did on television was my own special. I'm not counting Hot Dog, which is a, a children's show that, that was on Saturday morning. Oh, yes. Ah, there's yeah. kids out there. You saw <laughs> uh, But the last thing that I did actually was my special, which was now... Um, it was about... A year and a half ago, it was me, uh, Candy Berg in the Fifth Dimension, and Billy Graham. We did a show one evening. It was Give a me that line. volatile uh, <laughs> combination there. <laughs> and Billy Graham. Candy Bergen, um, myself, uh, the Fifth Dimension, and Billy Graham. And we that was the last uh, substantial thing that I did on television. That was Sometime, about... Somehow, I don't know, I didn't, didn't have to see your special, sadly, but oh, somehow <laughs> it's I... Okay. Was nothing against you. I, I, I'm doing something. I just don't see you and Billy Graham together for some reason or other. Yes, it was. Oh, it's that it's same, same kid one. again. Yeah. Thought, yeah. <laughs> it was good chemistry, though, uh, because Graham, as you know, or for instance, I, as you know, I'm an avowed atheist bordering on agnosticism with a strong streak of cowardice in me, <laughs> religiously. And Graham uh, is a religious man. I hope this doesn't come as a shock to you. No, I heard that. Yes. Yes, he's a tall, blonde, religious man. Religious man attractive and interesting i must say when i first met him i'd never met him until that show and uh and i found him very persuasive and after the show i i went out and bought a prayer shawl now that defies believability At, only because it's not true um <laughs> but enough about me this is no time to be wool gathering uh <laughs> I want to find out about you. I haven't seen you. Well, all right. Ask me anything that you want to know, and I'll, I'll fill you in on all the details. Well, I want to know. First, I've been hearing some uh, wild promos about your movie, a movie called Bananas. Is that right? Yes. Is that from Going Bananas, kind of going crazy? Is that the idea? Uh, no. Strangely enough, that's, that's from the Old Testament. Uh, the Old uh, Testament? Yes, yes. And ye shall go into the promised land, and ye shall take with thee a banana. <laughs> I don't remember. So I must have missed that page. I, no. I was reading out in the wind, I think, and the, that page turned fast. That's in the Book of Numbers. The, the Book Old of Testament, Numbers. Yes. <laughs> After the Book of Letters in the Old <laughs> Testament. <laughs> What, what, what does it mean in your interpretation as far as the book is, I mean, the movie is concerned? The movie is, a, it's just a comedy. It's just a, uh, it's over at the Cornet Theater, and it's a comedy. It's, a, it's um, you know, I was a big fan of the old-time comedy, um, Marx Brothers and W.C. Fields and that type of thing. And um, it's just my attempt at that kind of a picture, that kind of broad, uh, laugh picture. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been working on it now for about a year, or a year and a half. And this would be, you know, anyone could go see this? Anyone? <clears throat> uh... It's, yes, it's a GP-rated picture. GP? Yes. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. GP not only means uh, general audiences, but with parental guidance. Yes. Is that what you mean by your... Yes, it, it can be seen by, uh, by parents or uh, children or parents with children or parents of children. Uh, parents without children, um, <laughs> or any kind of parent, or any kind of uh, horny child can see that. <laughs> actually a family picture, you know, that's the truth. If you come from a broken home, it's a family picture. 
it's a sweet film. It really is. And kids can go see it. You know, take the money and run, which was um, uh, my first picture. Don't feel obliged to burst into uh, limitless applause. Um, <laughs> it was the first picture that I did. It wasn't the first picture I did. The first picture I did in my life was What's New Pussycat, which was, um, which was I wrote, but didn't direct. But take the money I uh, directed. And uh, that got an R rating, I believe, at the time. We had a, was it an R or an M rating? They had a different rating system at the time. And we had a fight to get an M rating for it. They wanted to give it an R rating. And it was really, if you saw the picture, it was really a picture that you could bring kids to uh, with impunity. And um, where? What, what? There was not a single moment of sex or nudity or obscenity in that film. Or my private life, for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> and in this picture, it's also, it's a clean picture. And, and you know, we got a GP rating. We had to beg for it, but we got one. Mm -hmm. Now, how about your uh, play, uh, Play It Against Them? Are they going to do that into a movie? Uh, I don't know. That was, that was purchased a long time ago by uh, 20th Century Fox, I believe. And I never heard about it again. It was, uh, Play It Against Them was purchased before it opened on Broadway. And uh, I don't know, is you know. It, is it likely that you would play sometimes the lead on Broadway does not play the lead in Hollywood? I have a feeling it's going to go that route. Um, Who do you see in your role? In Played Against Sam? Yes. The role that I created yes. on stage? Oh, get ready for this. Um, let me think. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I think there are a lot of people that could play me easily. Uh, Mahalia Jackson would be one. <laughs> <laughs> See, I don't know. I, you know, I wrote the thing for me, uh, and uh, they, they have had trouble casting. We had trouble getting a replacement for me on Broadway at the time. What have you been doing? Why? why? I've been away. I was down in uh, Mobile, I have to say it right, Mobile, Alabama, for the Junior Miss Pageant last evening. Had a great time. I'm, I think I'm over, I'm over entertained. Did you ever get that way? Me, there no. So many parties, I've been out, you know, they have great hospitality down there. They're great people. And they just turned the town over to me. They said, the town is yours. Yeah. And being a gregarious guy, I took it. Right. And what is the Miss... The, the junior Miss. Junior Miss. The junior uh, Miss high school Pageant. seniors from all over the country. Fifty young ladies compete for this title. Mm -hmm. And they win a lot of prizes if they win. A girl won a $10,000 scholarship. And they usually pick a very, very sweet, very bright girl. And she represents the youth of America. And they were... Uh, they're quite good. I, I think we got very good ratings. I heard the numbers today. We got incredible ratings last night. And the girls uh, are quite charming. They're really, they floor you at 17 and 18. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a... How much they know and how clever they are and how mm -hmm. they handle themselves. They're that's a good boys. age, 17 Lovely and 18. Age. I enjoyed it then and I've even enjoying it now. Yes. yes. Uh, well, I just have to break for one second. You'll understand this because you're of course, here every I've night. Of course, I've every night. We uh, this. There's no sense in coming around. <laughs> that's the whole that's thing. That's what it's all about. We'll return in just one moment right after this word of interest. Little old lady passing by, catching everyone's eye. Dubonnet, yeah, yeah. the drink for little old ladies who are this little and just about this old. Old enough to share your taste for something unexpected and to understand why we put the cat on the label. Hello, Tyler. Little old lady of mine. Dubonnet, it all started in France. Where else? I'm planting asters with seed tape. It's an exciting concept in gardening. All you do is lay down a strip of seed tape and cover it over with some dirt, and you're in business. If you'd like some, you can get 10 feet of this amazing tape, a 49-cent value, free inside these specially marked boxes of Alpha Yard leaf bags, Alpha Outdoor Cleanup bags, and Alpha Trash bags. Alpha bags make yard and house cleaning up jobs easy. They're made of tough plastic with no bottom seam to split open. So pick up a box. They'll make your life easier and prettier. Welcome to the snack cake jungle. Snack cakes everywhere. Are there any with more than good taste? Yes. Hostess snack cakes, now fortified with bodybuilding vitamins and iron, like Hostess cupcakes in chocolate or orange flavor. Good taste and vitamins and iron. Get new vitamin fortified Hostess cupcakes. Thank Hostess for the good taste kids love and good nutrition they need. When people have headache pain and want an extra strength medicine, they know about Anison, 
Compared to the other extra strength tablet, even with its additives, twice as many people now use Anison. And Anison has twice as much of the pain reliever doctors recommend most. When you want fast relief of headache pain, get twice as much of the pain reliever doctors recommend most. Anison. Hi, I'm back. Um, before the show started, the people that were online to come and see the show were given these yellow cards, and um, they were invited to ask any questions of me that they might want to ask. And uh, I, I haven't seen the cards, but if you could, uh, if I call your name, you could identify yourself or shriek out or something, so so we know that that you're there. I hope uh, you find that hot dog kid again. I hope he sent a card in. I, I don't know. I got a small group of cards here with questions that uh, they feel are meaningful. Um, I can't read the handwriting so easily. Have, have you ever seen the 101st edition of the Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus this year? Who, who asked that? Is that somebody from the circus? Is there a small freak out in the audience? <laughs> uh... <laughs> did anyone... I, I, yeah, it's really tough to see behind the lights. I, um... yeah, somebody yeah, I did not, because I'm not a great big circus fan. I never was as a child. I never found clowns or that kind of thing particularly amusing you know when I, I used to be taken to the circus as a little boy and and um, my parents used to laugh hysterically over the clown trying to sweep the spotlight up or that kind of thing and I I'm not a big circus fan I don't um, I, I don't like animals that much and the smell of sawdust or, or peanuts. peanuts or midgets or you know <laughs> that kind of thing Do you like bearded ladies I like bearded ladies yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that's a sickness with me. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that'd be enough. That'd be worth a trip to the circus for that. Do they still have a bearded lady oh, at the I circus? I think so, yes. Any high-class circus. No, no, no so they're, no. they're saying no. No. Well, they have a stout lady. A, a, you mean a fatty? Well, yeah, I don't like the... I never used that term myself. But Ringling uh, Brothers Barnum and Bailey stout fatty. Lady. yeah. <laughs> no, the, the guy that used to get me... I, do they have the strong man there still? I'm not yeah, sure. They they, have a, I think they have a giant. They have a tall fellow this year. I think. I went to the circus when I was younger, and I will never forget this. It was really nauseating. Um, the guy was strong. He wasn't big, but he was strong. And this will disgust you, so turn your sets off immediately. He, he <laughs> took a weight and hung it from a hook, a sharp pointed hook, and then put the hook through his tongue. I, I told you he'd throw up from this. And <laughs> he held the thing out like that and supported, you know, like a hundred pound weight from the tip of his tongue. And I knew then what I wanted to do in life. <laughs> what do you do with all your money? Ah, now that the massage parlors have been closed... <laughs> That's a very good question. Um, I don't make all that money, as you might think. I'm in this business for the art, and um, why are you laughing at that? That's true. I, I have never cared much about money, and I, the projects that I do are generally, you know, heart, heart projects. Right. Yes, what little money I do realize I am using to build a non-sectarian brothel in New Jersey. <laughs> Because I'm religiously wide open. Um, oh, this one's tough to read. In case my husband doesn't appear, I'm beginning to like this one. Would you like to join a small, intimate party after the show for dinner? Even if he shows, you're still invited. Well, I, I already have a date uh, to meet your husband at a party without you. <laughs> who's, the, who's the lady that's... Uh, This lady, I'm going to give it to you. Raising her hand, right? Yeah, can you raise your hand? I'm going to give it the Woody Allen check out. And, um... Very nice. Right. Oh, yes. Oh, oh the lights are on. Oh, yes. Where is she? Very cute. Where? Well, I can't see. What's Talk to your extension. Oh, She's oh, get a oh. Wait a minute. Hot pants. Remember that? Ah. Oh, are those hot pants? Yes. Is that what they mean by hot pants? That's what it is. Oh, you know, you could break your neck looking like this. <laughs> see, that's good. You may She's sit nice. now and we'll discuss Let's this. Let's find out if her husband showed. Did your husband show? Well, so who's the funny looking guy next to you? <laughs> Personal friend. Well, take your hand off a thigh. <laughs> you can turn the lights out now. I, I've seen her, and um, she's lovely, and I only wish I wasn't on television. Um, here's one that says, I don't know who you are. Uh, I 
see. <laughs> Janet, um, I can't read the last name. Can you read the last name there? Lastrowski, is it? Lastrowski? Is that close? Can Janet Lastrowski? Can you correct us? Because I'm not good at... Uh, Is anybody name. named Janet? Yeah. Is she out there? Janet. Uh, Janet, who are you? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know... Hmm. What is your personal philosophy? That's a good question. It's do unto others and then get out of town fast. <laughs> Oh, you want to I do, have a to go do a commercial? Excuse me. Okay, go ahead. I'll just keep reading these and you can uh, do the commercial. Do you take any pills, apply lotions, or have any secret potions which make you more sexually attractive? Uh, with the exception of Vespre, nothing. Uh, we have a commercial here? Okay, uh, now here's Ed to tell you why Kellogg's Corn Flakes and the American Breakfast are made for each other. Those are the, those are the Corn Flakes. That's Ed. You know, breakfast American style is breakfast that's uniquely American. Now, it has to be fast. That's because you're usually in a hurry. And it's got to be light because your early morning stomach may not be in the mood for anything that's stuffy. And it's got to be nourishing to get you through those early morning hours. Well, Kellogg's Corn Flakes is just what you need to start breakfast American style. It's fast and light and nourishing. Kellogg's Corn Flakes. Have it ready at your house when breakfast American style happens. And now here's another way Kellogg's makes mornings easier to face. Watch. You know, I'm a lucky guy. In college, I won the Heisman Trophy. Then I won a lease. And now I'm a grandfather. But staying on the young side to enjoy these good things takes a lot more than luck. It takes sensible exercise and sensible eating. Like Kellogg's Product 19, the high-potency cereal, with all the minimum daily adult requirements for vitamins and iron. Tastes good, too. Doesn't it, Lucky? Want to get back on the young side? Start with Kellogg's Product 19. What women have gone through to curl their hair is enough to curl your hair. The curling iron. Permanent wave. You got a wave that really lasted, but at your own risk. The all-night roller. The set stayed in, but there were no guarantees on your husband. Now there's Lady Remington Instant Steam Rollers and Heat Activated Conditioner. Because the rollers are heated with moisturizing steam, it puts moisture into your hair instead of taking it out. It can set your hair in five minutes and, barring unforeseen circumstances, keeps it set for 24 hours. At last, something to increase the life of your curl without decreasing the life of your hair. Lady Remington Instant Steam Rollers. Available at Dalmo. Hi, we're back. I, um, it's funny, I was just thinking about this. You know, when you, when you do the show, they give you notes on the various guests that come out uh, as to what they're doing. And I'm, I, I find myself writing little notes down here from these notes onto the table because I think from childhood, you know, I'm an inveterate cheater at school. Perfect, right? Yeah, and, and I can't just look at their notes. You know, I don't feel comfortable unless I have a gyp sheet here with all the, uh, yeah. the notes. This next uh, gentleman um, is uh, certainly one of my great idols. I mean, I spent um, my whole childhood seeing his movies over and over and over again, and then you'll notice if you watch Bananas how much I've secretly uh, copied and, and have been influenced by him. He's certainly one of the greatest comedians, I think, has done some of the greatest comedy films we've ever seen. Uh, I have to mention that he will be at Harrisburg, Virginia tomorrow and at Tulane University on May 8th, and that's all I can say. Welcome, Bob Hope. <laughs>
think you did enough for me? I, it's a, I have to say this before you go on. When I was younger, and I used to go out on dates with girls, beforehand, 15 minutes beforehand, I would always think to myself, tonight I'm Bob Hope. And I used to get all the lines and get everything ready and the little funny walk that he does and everything and, you know, and go out on the dates with the girls and the lines would come off just as quickly as could be and, and I went through the whole evening. Don't tell me you scored better than I did. Um, no, I was going to get to that point. Um, why are you so dressed up? Man? I'm going to the, uh, I got to go right to dinner here for the Dutch Treat Club at the Ambassador. Oh, what is that? And, uh, well, it's a, you know, it's a, probably one of the oldest clubs in, uh, ever in New York. It's a bunch of newspapermen. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're giving me some kind of, you know, you can, they give you an award to come to dinner and say a few words, you know. And they're giving me the first Rube Goldberg Award. Do you remember him? Oh, sure. All the gimmicks. And sure. I think he invented, the, he invented the Edsel, I think. I'm not sure. <laughs> but uh, they're giving me, and it's uh, some kind of award they built up. But it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor, you know. And, I, and they're all friends of mine, a lot of friends of mine. Some of them have reviewed my show. Yeah. But uh, do, you, do you go night to night from being honored here and honored there and honored there? Because... That seems to be... You no, know, around this time of the year, you appreciate a free meal. <laughs> <laughs> so but uh, they have the same thing. In Hollywood, they have a, a Dutch Street Club there. Mm -hmm. It's known as Friends of Jack Benny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that great face. Uh, <laughs> look. Look who's talking. <laughs> I knew you were a sex symbol as soon as I saw you wearing those horny rim glasses. <laughs> I, um, let me ask you, you think you're oh, me, don't you? I, I, it's you, been my really, fondest wish. No, he's been on television plugging his pictures, and I started that show. That's right, you're the master I don't of the think, free plug. <laughs> yeah, of plugs. <laughs> of, plugs. <laughs> of plugs. And uh, you were on David Frost's show last night, and you were against him with a big rating. You're going to be very big. Oh, sorry about that. Is that true? Yeah, we had high numbers. No, but uh, you do, and uh, I, I've been watching you carefully. And you don't know this, Woody, but uh, you uh, submitted a script to me when you worked with a fellow called Rich uh, when I was in radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you wanted a, a writing job. Yeah, I wanted to write for you more than anything else Are in you the still world. Interested? <laughs> We could, I may be able to use you, Woody. We, we could talk about it, you know, because... Uh, I love this guy. This is one of the finest young talents on our uh, show. You're, you're a great delight. Believe oh, me. thank we, you. What's your no need no, to no, 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 you don't have to. Um, I don't know. It's not, it's not any... Uh, it's not any con because you, I don't want to say too many nice things about you. No, because then they don't believe it, you know? That's right. And but I want are, them to believe I it. Just, I, just, I just resent you saying that you write, direct, produce, and star. Because I think you're silly. Who are you going to blame? <laughs> that's right. That's exactly what happens. You know, when something goes down the drain, you're the one on the line all no, the time. No, that's true. That's true. But I've you, had you, that you feeling. No, you haven't had that experience. And you, you've done pretty well in your... You're delighting the world with it, believe me. Let me ask you a question, because I'm really interested in, in what you're in town for. Uh, did you come into town just to do the Dutch Street yeah, thing? Yes, sir, I did that, and then I'm on my way to, uh, to New Orleans tomorrow to play the uh, Tulane University. And I've got the Dinglings who are drying out from the Dean Martin show. And uh, also got a local group called the uh, Tulaneans that opened the show. And then I'm going to... No, I'm going to Hattiesburg tomorrow. What am I talking about? I'm going to Hattiesburg. Mrs. I have your schedule here. Southern Mrs. <laughs> okay, you can, uh, you're on the Tonight Show at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you How am I doing? That's what I want to know. <laughs> you, you'll be at Harrisburg. Is, is no, it Hatt no, uh, Hattiesburg. Well, I got to tell you, the, the, the originally the, both of those stops. <laughs> <laughs> the originally the card said Haltiesburg, and I knew that wasn't in Virginia. Shirley's at the bar most of the time. <laughs> and then they changed it to Harrisburg, but that's in Pennsylvania. Southern Mississippi University. Right. What do you do? Play the college or lecture yeah, or? Yeah, no, no. I just go out and do. I played. Doc and I played down at El Paso for uh, uh, University of Texas a few months ago, and uh, you know, like for instance, they get out and do uh, do uh, the first half of the show. Mm -hmm. And then I come on and work with the, tell all the, do all the routines, you know, and uh, 
sing a couple of songs and uh, tell the jokes. And right. They're the greatest audience in the world. Oh, I imagine they would be fantastic than, than for you. a college audience. Well, how many colleges have you played? Is that a big thing with you? Yeah. Well, I play them all, all the time. I'm playing uh, Indiana and Illinois this year, and I uh, played Notre Dame and Washington. And, you know, and, and you meet such great, great audiences, I think. You you, haven't you played any colleges? I played one or two well, you years, got some years ago. I know. They they're, give you the most. They, they love you. They're very responsive. Well, do you get the feeling you're going to run out of colleges uh, going at that rate? Because <laughs> <laughs> they're going to run out of me, I tell you that. No, it's uh, it's uh, it's it's fun, and just to be invited is uh, quite a pleasure. Yeah, and what have you been doing in New York, may I ask? No, nothing. I'm just uh, here for this thing. I had a little trouble getting to the hotel last night. I tried to get a cab, but I couldn't find a co-signer. <laughs> I don't uh, I don't mind the rates, but the cab I was in, this guy had a meter with a racing stripe on it. You know? <laughs> And it's, it's different, isn't it? New York has changed. These glass buildings uh, intrigue me. I'm afraid to go to the men's room. I really am. <laughs> I'm saving all that for a picture. <laughs> no, but um, I do. I, you know, as you know, I was on Broadway here, and I want to come back. And uh, I saw uh, your next guest, by the way, who is not while I'm talking. <laughs> yes. I walk off. Just have to do a quickie or the whole network right, goes down okay. the drain. Right, Here's a message. Uh, oh, yes. Here it is. You'll all hear from Jack Parr, I'll tell you that. Uh, here's a message about the complete with beef, beef stroganoff from Lipton. Yeah. What a great... Presenting one of the world's great dinners. Beef stroganoff, tender beef, onions, mushrooms, sour cream sauce... Egg noodles, beef stroganoff, made by Lipton, just for two. From this box to your table in 15 minutes, complete with everything, including the beef. Beef stroganoff, or new chicken stroganoff, great dinners from Lipton. Oh, if you love ice, here's your tea. Lipton Instant keeps its flavor no matter how much ice you add, because Lipton's 100% real tea. No artificial additives, just natural refreshment. Compare Lipton with this other instant. See? Lipton has the natural color of real tea. Keeps its natural flavor no matter how much ice you add. Hmm. Lipton Instant, the natural refresher. What happens inside your system to plain aspirin and bufferin? This illustrates most of bufferin with its extra speed is already going to your headache when most of plain aspirin is still in your stomach. So with bufferin, there's less to upset your stomach when there's more pain reliever going to your headache. Bufferin, faster to your headache, better for your stomach. Mmm, mmm, you all need new fan. Only Fab has lemon fresh in borax, yes it's true. Now Fab's even better, cause it's got new brightness too. For wash and wear, permanent press, Billy's blue jeans and Betsy's dress. Well, that all is doing something good to Fab, it's true. Oh Fab, we're glad they added all fabric brightness to the lemon fresh and borax. Transportation furnished by American Airlines, now offering the new Coach Lounge on 747 Luxury Liner Service. The plane with no competition. It's good to know you're on American Airlines. the excitement of the Emmy Awards Sunday night at 10, 9 central time. If you have an electric coffee pot and you're pretty attached to it, you may get to expect too much from it. But if you get bitter coffee, don't blame the pot. Blame the coffee. Introducing Sanka Electric Perk Coffee. We take a lot of the bitterness out when we take the caffeine out. Your pot gets coffee that's less bitter, so you get coffee that's less bitter. <laughs> New Sanka Electric Perk. Who needs a bitter cup of coffee? Peter's boy escaped from Hungary when he was 12. 
Now he brings young Hungarians closer to the world their government censors. Information with a beat. Folytatva a délután Iran belül műsorát következőnek a Drifters együttes és on Broadway. For uncensored news and music, millions of East Europeans switch on Radio Free Europe. The in sound from outside. For facts about RFE in East Europe, write Radio Free Europe, Box 1971, Mount Vernon, New York. Perspective explores the Pine Barrens of New Jersey, Saturday at 7 p.m. on 4. See the man from Nationwide for life insurance in Middletown, Donald L. Hoffman, and in Brandywine, Leonard B. Hancock. Just chatting here, I was I was asking Bob about the, the fact that he always seems to have material that's appropriate to any occasion that uh, he's called upon to perform, and uh, you know I find that remarkable that that you can do that. Well, I, I keep uh, I keep uh, working with my guys, my writers, you know. Mm -hmm. I actually don't need them <laughs> yes. unless I want to say something. <laughs> what do you, do you travel around with them? No, no, no. I get them on on the horn and tell them what I'm doing, and you know, and, and talk to them and see if, and see what they have in mind, you know. And they just shoot you some jokes. They shoot me some things, some fresh things, and uh, and I, I've been doing that for the last 35, 40 years. That's amazing. It's yeah. remarkable that you can memorize well, them. Well, so you know, many, you know uh, Woody, uh, when you when you're like you, I know when you when you become gag minded, things fall into line because you say now and all same gags play like I said the other night at this. Uh, big dinner in Dallas. I said, I, I can't stay here too long because I have to entertain the troops in Washington, D.C. Well, that's been done, you know, so many times in different ways, but it still plays, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll use it again if it still plays. One of the wildest things, Woody, I was at Bob's house one day for lunch, and one of the wildest things, in his dressing area, he has trunks packed and open, like one has two sport coats and a tuxedo, one has four. He doesn't know which one he's going to take, depending on how long he's going to be gone. He's close up number four. And out he goes. That's amazing how you just trapped. That was you. You're the only one that saw four trunks, by the way. <laughs> I see. <laughs> One trunk there, Ed. Oh, no. I don't want to worry. You're not ready for the tank or anything, but there was one, one little trunk there. I love that. Say, early in the show, I was mentioning Billy Graham, and I know that you're kind of friendly with him. Well, no, I played with him. I'm very friendly with him. I adore him, but uh, I played... Uh, uh, he baptized me yesterday. Oh, really? At what? At the golf game. I, uh... <laughs> no, I, uh, he was at the dinner, and we played in the Pro-Am at Byron Nelson's tournament in Dallas, and I played with, uh, Byron Nelson, Lord Nelson, and, uh, Al Meadows, this great philanthropist, and Billy Graham, and we were billed as the Supremes. <laughs> No, he's beautiful. I, lo I love to play with him because we, we play about the same. He prays and I cheat. <laughs> Actually, I don't, uh, I, I, I don't cheat. But you ever play with a fella where it's raining and pouring raining only on you? <laughs> <laughs> but he's a wonderful guy. I think he saved more people in the household finance company. And... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I enjoy playing with him because he is a beautiful, beautiful man. He's a little bit of a show-off, you know, like walking across water hazards and things. Like I wish uh, I wish I had known that he played golf when I met him. I had no idea. He's, he must be a secret golfer. Yeah, he does. He does. He's, uh, and he hits that ball pretty good for a fellow playing from a kneeling position. <laughs> The question, if These he, are some of the jokes. Yeah. <laughs> All of the jokes. <laughs> if he swings and misses, does he ever curse? No, well, not openly. But his lips move. I thought. <laughs> You know, as we're, as we're speaking here, I, I don't know if you're aware of this or not. I mean, must be that, that in um, in Japan, I think they're they're honoring you on an around the clock Bob Hope festival of some sort. I don't Bob know. Hope Day. Bob Hope Day yeah, in Japan. I just found out this afternoon. And, uh, what does that consist of? Well, it, a, actually, it's a gag because uh, 30 years ago, May 6, which is, it's May 6 in Japan right now, but 30 years ago I started doing service shows in uh, Marchfield and Riverside. Mm -hmm. And on May the 6th was Skinny Ennis and Jerry Colonna and Francis Lamford. And the Armed Forces Radio Service got a hold of this. So they have Bob Hope Day in Japan. And I just found that out. I don't know what that means because uh, 
Although I kind of enjoy I've never seen my name in bamboo before. <laughs> <laughs> have they made, have they dubbed your movies into Japanese? Oh, yeah, sure. They're funny, too. They're really funny. Yeah, have you seen yourself in Japanese? Yeah, I've seen it in Japanese, and I've seen it in uh, Spanish down in uh, Puerto Rico. Bing and I saw Bing and I doing Road to Utopia in Spanish. It's so funny. Spanish. <laughs> you seen one of yours dubbed? I haven't seen one dubbed. I don't know if you're aware of dubbing, but, you know, in a foreign country, they'll grab uh, two foreign actors, and, and they'll knock out... Uh, the American voice and put in themselves so that people can understand it. And it's real. I, I prefer a subtitle picture, um, you know, myself. Yeah, I would yeah. much rather picture a subtitle. But they're so clever. They're so clever. We had, uh, you know, every place, uh, in every country, they have a man that dubs for you, and this guy has to understand your delivery and everything. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I saw a picture that I did in Italian in Rome, and I sent for the guy to congratulate him. He was so fantastic. But I saw Captain the Canary in 1946 in Paris. I went out to a suburban theater, and this guy, I'm out there killing them in French, you know. And as I walked out in the lobby, the manager said, uh, French, all French. And I said, no, no, just on the screen. <laughs> But they're beautiful. They do a fine job. Yeah, it's remarkable how they how they do get your delivery. Yeah. You know how they how they. Yeah, they know. They, they look for a guy that can really handle it in that language. Right. Except when you sit home on television and watch the. You ever see those movies on television late at night? They're the worst dubbing jobs I've ever seen in my life. There's no attempt made at acting at all. It's like they get two guys out of an all-night cafeteria and have them read. You know. <laughs> you know they just sit there and read the lines and. There's, there's no sense of, uh, of performance about it. Have, have you seen yourself subtitled in a foreign language? No, I don't think so. No. What is, what is, your, what is your favorite movie of yours? Oh, gee, I have so many of them. Really, so many of them. I, I enjoyed doing the foys, and I enjoyed uh, Pale Face and Facts of Life, and most of the road pictures. I, I, we really enjoyed because you never, you know, you never knew what was going to happen. And, in the, especially in the early road pictures because it used to be a contest every time Bing and I would go to the mat it would be a contest on who would top who and uh, he, got to, he, he got a writer or two by himself and I would get my writer and we'd go in and the stagehands would fall off the lights you know because you never knew what was going to happen you were improvising with yeah, them? improvising and, and trying to top each other and that, that made it very hot and uh, you never knew which print they were going to use you know which take they were going to print or anything and uh, it was wild it was a wild thing yeah excuse me one second just let me let me hold up the Reynolds wrap oh uh, now you're about to see Reynolds wrap used in ways you may never have thought po oh I'm sorry you're about Reynolds wrap uh, used in ways you may never have thought possible will you see that stalled car in time you did because a sheet of Reynolds wrap reflected your headlights Reynolds wrap introduces new ideas for men for golfers Reynolds Wrap keeps clubs clean and shiny. For do-it-yourselfers, Reynolds Wrap insulates that extra room. For barbecuers, Reynolds Wrap lines your grill, spreads heat evenly, makes cleanup easy. For weekend gardeners, Reynolds Wrap protects young plants and trees. Why can Reynolds Wrap do so many things so well? Around the house and outdoors, as well as in the kitchen. Because every inch of Reynolds Wrap is oven tempered for flexible strength. Reynolds Wrap, wouldn't you hate to be without it? Wonder asks, how big do you want to be? Big enough to get a drink of water. Big enough to ski. You can help them grow bigger and stronger with Wonder and Rich Bread. Wonder supplies vitamins and protein to help your child grow bigger and stronger during the years 1 through 12, when your child reaches 90% of adult height. Delicious Wonder Bread. Wonder helps build strong bodies 12 ways. If you suffer from attacks of bronchial asthma, you know tablets, capsules, or liquids take almost 20 minutes to work. You want relief that starts in seconds. You want Broncade Mist. Broncade Mist speeds directly to your lungs, opens clogged air passages in seconds, helps release trapped air so you breathe freely, in and out. So the next time bronchial asthma threatens, relax. Reach for Broncade Mist. Fastest relief possible.
taken from a straight story. You know? Yeah, Doc. My next guest is um, a gentleman that I that I uh, have only met backstage for one second. Uh, he was the star of uh, Last of the Red Hot Lovers and is currently in um, a, a film called A New Leaf, uh, a smash comedy over the Radio City Music Hall. He's a very funny gentleman. I've seen him on stage, but not really in person. Mr. James Coco. <laughs> It's terrific to be sitting next to Mr. Hope because last week the ushers came running backstage and they said, you know who's in the audience, Bob Hope? And so I immediately sent out for some champagne because I figured he'd come backstage afterwards like everybody always does because Ethel Merman was there the night before and she came. You didn't come backstage. You know something? I never I, felt I so it. small. Oh, come on. I mean, you're what am I, small. nothing? Yeah. Am I a nothing that you couldn't come back? You're a beauty. You're am a I? beauty nothing, I'll tell you that. Now, you were so great, Jim, and I wanted to come back, but I had a lot of people with me, you know, and schlepping them back there and giving out that whole con, you know. The you thing. couldn't tell I was going to send you a wire. Okay. Yes, you didn't but do now that. Now I want to tell you. <laughs> you didn't do anything. I did. You couldn't dump. I knew that. Soon five, I... Excuse me. You couldn't dump up for five seconds. Thing. I have to see a poor Italian Jeez, who a... just made it this year after fifty-five years of. You're struggle. the last of the Red Hot Losers, aren't you? Just can say that again. You well, the show. No, <laughs> no, you're beautiful. You Thank really you. are, and I enjoy. I meant to send you a wire, but I just couldn't you didn't find. I couldn't I find. Know. You couldn't uh, find a telephone. I know. Right. <laughs> but I knew I'd tell you, Jim. You're great. You're just great. Thank you. Thank you. I should, should I be here when this happens? That's okay. <laughs> it's okay. You see, the whole, the whole thing is... a few holes in here, I think. <laughs> the whole thing, I'm, I'm such a... You know, you're a movie buff, aren't you? A fan. Yeah, mm -hmm. real And so am I. I mean, I see everything. Yeah, but mostly on television. I mean, I love the late night shows, and I love all the old movies. And I used to cash in all the milk bottles, and I used to go to the movies. I mean, I like four and five times a day. I loved the movies. So I mean, when somebody like Bob Hope comes to the theater and you're starring, you would expect a person like that to dump his crummy friends and come backstage, wouldn't you? I, mean, I got to tell you, Jim. Uh, who you I just stayed here to congratulate you on your performance. <laughs> but I got to tell you the funniest thing because this is such a an old thing of going backstage you know, and handing out. That. I don't know how you feel about that. Yeah. And if I really knew you better, I'd have been back kissing you and everything because you were so great. Yeah. But in Roberta, the opening night of Roberta, this is a back a few years at New Amsterdam Theater, Noel Coward was in there, the opening night. And uh, he we were back. so excited. Wait till I tell you how he came yeah. back. <laughs> we were so excited, you know, and we were all on stage after everybody left. They raised the curtain. We were hugging each other about our own performance. And Noel Coward came down this empty theater right down, and Max Gordon was standing on the stage, and we all watched him. And he ran up to the, to the orchestra pit, and he looked up. He said, Max? Max said, yes. He said, it stinks. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't come back. <laughs> it's good to finally meet you. I, I saw you in the show, and I've seen you on talk shows. You didn't come back either. I mean, were you with, with him? I don't understand. I never come back. No, you never I'm, come back. No, because I'm, I'm too shy to do that. I don't, you know, I just can't do it. Ethel Merman came back. She was terrific. I mean, it's, you know, it's, after you've been running on a show for about a year and a half, it's marvelous when you find out that somebody is out there because then you play it for them, you know, you yeah. know, you know yeah. after that longer time. We met before. We met at the Purple Onion in, was it San Francisco? Is, is, there, is there a Purple Onion in San Francisco? It was a San Francisco. Yeah. No. And, and it was a long time ago, and I was on the road with Shot in the Dark. And... You sure you don't mean The Hungry Eye? The Hungry Eye. Right. With Barbara Streisand. At The Hungry Eye. At The Hungry Eye. Now, that was, what, seven or eight years ago, I guess? Oh, more. That was close to uh, eight or nine. Eight or nine years ago. That's yes. Longer. <laughs> seven or eight, eight or nine. <laughs> Where am I? I don't know. Um, but it was that long ago. But anyway. I love working with these older fellas. Don't yes. you? Nice. <laughs> and I went to the high. And we met backstage, and, and uh, Barbara was just starting out on that big nightclub tour that, I mean, she wasn't the mm -hmm. superstar. Star she is today, and neither were you at the time. But yeah, but it was it was marvelous. You know that whole hungry eye period. I think was so. Oh, it was great. It, it, it's not in existence anymore. No, it's not. And we met again. You wouldn't give me a job. I auditioned for a show of yours called "Don't Drink the Water," and I, I told you I wanted to read for the part of the priest, and you said you're all wrong. I was. No, was it me or the director? No, you. It was me, Definitely right? Definitely you. Uh, <laughs> never, never forget.
got a face. <laughs> it was him. Wouldn't give me the job. It was a little teeny part. Then I said, well, how about the part of the Turk? Or the, there was a, an Arab or something in it. Or a, and There's always an Arab in everything. One of your plays, right. And, and <laughs> it was an unsympathetic part. But at the time, I was starving, so I thought I'd play anything. And you went, no. You should ask me for dough. I couldn't, didn't even get to it yet, you know, I mean, we never got That's that. funny, because I didn't do most of the casting for that. Uh, the you were there that day. You were there. <laughs> it was unmistakably, as a matter of fact, it was the finals. So you were, you were there, you know, I didn't have to go through the preliminaries. They said, you're definitely right for this play. There were 800 parts you can play in this play. Wait till Woody sees you, and you saw me, and that was it. Really, that's you so strange. Me, no, no, so. probably not. I, I can't understand why I wouldn't have hired you for, at the very minimum, the Arab. <laughs> I wonder why you didn't hire me. I don't know. Because in retrospect, you are I did right. my all-purpose European accent <laughs> for you. I did everything. I, you know. <laughs> you'd have been, you'd have been, you would have been right for some of the parts in Don't Drink the Water, because that had, that had all sorts of oddballs uh, running 70. through it. <laughs> No, but you'd have been, you know, there are a lot of parts you could have made into a delightful little cameo. I don't do cameos anymore, but I, at the time I would have done it. I would gladly have done anything, but you didn't give me the part. No, well, that was my first play, and I, I really, you know, was scared out of my mind. Cause then you know, when you were casting for... I'll go on with this later. <laughs> No, did you try out for that? No, no, I wouldn't go near it. No, I wasn't going to go through that twice. I wasn't going to be rejected twice by you. I figured if you didn't want me for Don't Drink the Water, you wouldn't want me if I could play it against Sam. And then I, and then... Play it against Sam was all female yeah. roles. No, no, I heard there was a part that was cut out, a part of a psychiatrist. Yes, that was Remember? cut out. Remember? That was cut and out. And I was going up for that part, cut out. That was my line. <laughs> That was my luck. I went through more flops and things and parts that were cut out of town and everything. Really? Is it my imagination or or does your weight vacillate? Because sometimes your I imagination? see... imagination? <laughs> Last Saturday. Your imagination? Last Saturday night I was home and I was watching a rerun of the show. On the, and I was on it. And it was taped last July. Remember that, fellas? Last July, what I looked like? And I had on a white suit. And I looked like... The good humor truck. You know, it was like I didn't believe what I looked like, you know. And I looked at that thing, and I ran to the television set, and I turned the damn thing off. And I said, "No, let me turn it back." And I turned it back on again. And that was, be you know, I went on the Stillman diet. You know, that was directly after I had seen myself in that white suit, which I have burned since. Mm -hmm. And and I saw my, and I said, "What kind of chutzpah is that? A person to get up in a white suit at that way?" I was unbelievably ugly. I really was. I mean, I looked at myself and I thought, that is not a nice thing to walk on stage like that. And I lost 45 pounds on, that, on the stoma diet. And then I got sick. And when I get sick, I eat a lot. And I ate a lot and I gained back 10 pounds. But now I've taken it off again. So I'm at the weight that you see me now, which is not quite right for an Arab. But then again, you know, I, there are other parts. I can play other parts. So you are obsessed with, with dieting and that kind of thing? Obsessed? It's the curse. It's a curse. It's my whole life I've been on a diet. Since I was born, I was on a diet. I have never not been on a diet. I have never in my life not been on a diet. I don't know what it... And no, you know, I never have. I never been... I mean, I don't know what it's like, I mean, to eat a plate of spaghetti with... I mean, with no conscience at all. I mean, you know, just to know that I'm eating and that it's going to be okay. Every time I eat a plate, I think, what is this doing? My sister, who's this in incredible cook, you know. I went over there Easter Sunday, and I don't know what she had. She had everything there, you know. And I ate it all, and I went home, and then I went right back on the diet again. So I was okay. But I, I've always been on it. You have never had a weight problem. No, no. It feels great to eat spaghetti, you know, without any you problem. You have never had... <laughs> I can, I can, Good yes, I can tell you about all the foods that tell you have. Tell me about it. I love to hear about it. I can food, gorge you? myself on all kinds of caloric nonsense and without gaining a pound. How's your heart, though? My I mean, heart? You know, I mean, because you can't. I watched a program the other night. Well, my you. heart is... Yeah. Uh, I just have to, I just have to, now, now here's a word from the Kimberly Clock Corporation. <laughs> Listen, gentle sex, you deserve the special care and comfort of the Kotique Collection, like Kotique Feminine Deodorant Spray. Truly effective, but ever so gentle. The new Woman Wise Deodorant. 
Cotique Feminine Deodorant Spray from the Cotique Collection. Just for the gentle sex. The Cotique Collection. It wasn't easy to make that first pop-up tissue. Lots of people tried. But nothing seemed to work. Until Kleenex invented the first tissue that pops up perfect. And from a very pretty package. Kleenex, the first tissue. Do you know what happens when you percolate coffee? A percolator reboils and recycles the coffee, which can make coffee bitter. And look at the sediment it leaves. I'd like to introduce a totally different way of making coffee. The Melita filter coffee maker. Melita gives you clean, pure coffee. And it's easy to make. Put a pre-shaped Melita filter paper in the filter top. Measure in fine or drip grind of your favorite coffee. Now, just wet the grounds and let it trickle through. This explodes the full flavor in the coffee. Then pour in the right amount of water. The disposable filter paper traps all the sediment that can make coffee bitter. So Melita gives you only clean, pure coffee with less acids and oils. You can actually taste and see the difference. Coffee tastes better, filtered the Melita way. Hi, we're sitting here with Bob Hope and James Coco. Uh, and you were just talking about um, fat and diets and... Fat? I never say fat. I'm sorry. I have never said fat in my life. I always say... Yeah, I've said fat. But I never say fat in... Well, yeah, I do. What about it? Have you ever... <laughs> I, 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 I want to know something. I ask, have you ever had a weight problem? I have to fight it all the time. But I, I tell you who I'm proud of is Gleason. You know, he took off 60 pounds. He had to. He was being seen on all three networks. <laughs> You know, that he is pretty good with it. He's fighting it like... But he really slipped yesterday. He ate a catering truck. <laughs> oh, I know the feeling. <laughs> so what would you do if they made a movie of your life? I mean, who, who, who do you think would play you? I, Anna Magnani would be a good choice. <laughs> uh, we, we, we like the same things, yeah. I mean, the, 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 uh, who would be a good choice to play? Me would be a, a terrific choice to play me. I don't, I don't. You know, I'm leaving the show soon, uh, in three weeks. Mm. And uh, they told me that they thought that Dom DeLuise was going to take over the part, which I think is a terrific. First, I think he's marvelous. Mm -hmm. But I said that's terrific because you don't have to change the pictures out front because we look so much alike, you know. Dom oh, sure. Very, and a couple of years ago, uh, they wanted us to do. Play twins and boys from Syracuse. You know the twins, mm -hmm. the, 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 which I think the twins, been, right? The twins. Is that what they? Yeah, the twins. Mm -hmm. Why did I get on that? I don't know. But what you did you ask me? Me? I didn't say anything. I haven't had a word since you sat down. <laughs> no, I was. You were saying that you were leaving the show. You were talking about your heart. <laughs> oh no, that, yeah, that was a long time ago. Sure, that, that stopped beating show. 15 minutes ago. Oh, right, right. Uh, you were saying that you were leaving the show, which, which yes, uh, yes, I'm leaving the show after 18 months. And it's been wonderful and terrific, and I've loved it, but I'm, I'm, it's, it's nice that I'm leaving. It's I just wanted time. to stay and say hello to him, Woody, and, uh, and I've got to go to this dinner. Oh, you're going to leave now, I see. Yeah, I hate to do it, but, I, you know, I, uh, I, uh, No, no, listen. It's okay. Well, why don't you serve food here? I'll stay. <laughs> um, you, you're going to be doing the Tulane thing? or? I'm going to Tulane, and... Uh, and uh, the Tulane Alumni Association is putting on this show. A bunch mm -hmm. of great guys. Well, and thanks for coming. Hey, Pleasure. Jim Wright. Thank you so much. Concerned. The movie is, a, it's just a comedy. It's just a, uh, it's over at the Cornet Theater, and it's a comedy. It's, a, it's um, you know, I was a big fan of the old-time comedy, um, Marx Brothers and W.C. Fields and that type of thing. And um, it's just my attempt at that kind of a picture, that kind of broad uh, laugh picture. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been working on it now for about a year, or a year and a half. And this would be, you know, anyone could go see this? Anyone? <clears throat> uh, it's, yes, it's a GP-rated picture. GP? Yes. Uh, that's a good question. GP normally means uh, 
general audiences, but with parental guidance. Yes. Is that what you mean by your... Yes, it, it can be seen by, uh, by parents or uh, children or parents with children or parents of children, uh, parents without children, um, <laughs> or any kind of parent or any kind of uh, horny child can see that. Um, <laughs> it's actually a family picture. It, it, you know, that's the truth. If, if you come from a broken home, it's a family picture. <laughs> It's a sweet film, it really is, and kids can go see it. You know, Take the Money and Run, which was um, uh, my first picture. Don't feel obliged to burst into uh, limitless applause. Um, <laughs> was the first picture that I did. It wasn't the first picture I did. The first picture I did in my life was What's New Pussycat, which was, um, which was I wrote, but didn't direct. But Take the Money, I uh, directed, and uh, that got an R rating, I believe, at the time. We had a, was it an R or an M rating? They had a different rating system at the time, and we had a fight to get an M rating for it. They wanted to give it an R rating. And it was really, if you saw the picture, it was really a picture that you could bring kids to uh, with impunity. And um, where? What, what? There was not a single moment of sex or nudity or obscenity. Uh, the Fifth Dimension and Billy Graham. And we that was the last uh, substantial thing that I did on television. That was Sometime, about... Somehow, I don't know, I did not to see your special, sadly, but oh, somehow <laughs> I... Okay. Well, nothing against you. I'm doing something. I just don't see you and Billy Graham together for some reason or other. Yes, it was. Oh, it's that it's same, same kid one. again. Yeah. Thought, yeah. It was good chemistry, though, uh, because Graham, as you know, or for instance, I, as you know, I'm an avowed atheist bordering on agnosticism with a strong streak of cowardice in me, religiously. <laughs> and Graham uh, is a religious man. I hope this doesn't come as a shock to you. No, I heard that. Yes. Yes, he's a tall, blonde, religious man. Religious man attractive and interesting I must say when I first met him I'd never met him until that show and uh, and I found him very persuasive and after the show I I went out and bought a prayer shawl now that defies believability At, only because it's not true um, <laughs> But enough about me. This is no time to be wool gathering. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm a, I want to find out about you. I haven't seen you. Well, all right. Ask me anything that you want to know, and I'll, I'll fill you in on all the details. Well, that. I want to know. First, I've been hearing some uh, wild promos about your movie, a movie called Bananas. Is that right? Yes. Is that from Going Bananas, kind of going crazy? Is that the idea? Or? Uh, no. Strangely enough, that's, that's from the Old Testament. Uh, the Old uh, Testament? Yes, yes. And ye shall go into the promised land, and ye shall take with thee a banana. I, I don't remember. I must have missed that page. I, no. I was reading out in the wind, I think, and the, that page turned fast. That's in the Book of Numbers. The, the Book Old of Testament. Numbers. Yes, right? <laughs> After the Book of Letters in the Old Testament. <laughs> What, what, what does it mean in your interpretation as far as the book is... The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. From New York, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. Johnny's guest host tonight is Woody Allen. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severance under the NBC Orchestra, inviting you to join Woody and his guests, Bob Hope, James Coco, Dr. Irwin Stillman, Kay Hart, and Chief Red Fox. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Woody Allen! How are you, Macau? Welcome back. Thank you very much. You have not, you've been neglecting us. I thought you'd given us up. No. It's up for uh, the movie world. You've just kind of disappeared from view. We haven't seen you. When was the last time you were here? Uh, well, I have, this week has been, I've done a lot of television, but prior to this week I was off. The last thing that I did on television was my own special. I'm not counting Hot Dog, which is a, a children's show that, that was on Saturday morning. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. kids out there. You saw it? But the last thing that I did actually was my special, which was now, um, it was about, a year and a half ago, it was me, uh, Candy Berg in the Fifth Dimension, and Billy Graham. We did a show one evening. It was Give a me that volatile uh, <laughs> combination. There. And Billy Graham. Candy Bergen, um, myself. They're quite good. I, I think we got very good ratings. I heard the numbers today. We got incredible ratings last night. 
And the girls uh, are quite charming. They're really, they floor you at 17 and 18. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a... How much they know and how clever they are and how yeah. they handle themselves. They're that's a good forward. age, 17 and 18. Age. I enjoyed it then and I've maybe been enjoying it now. Yes. yes. Uh, well, I just have to break for one second. You'll understand this because you're of here course, every I've been night. Of course, every night. We uh, don't do this. There's no sense in coming around. That's the whole that's thing. That's what it's all about. We'll return in just one moment right after this word of interest. Little old lady passing by, catching everyone's eye. Dubonnet, the drink for little old ladies who are this little and just about this old. Old enough to share your taste for something unexpected and to understand why we put the cat on the label. Hello, tiger. Little old lady mine. Dubonnet, it all started in France. Where else? I'm planting asters with seed tape. It's an exciting concept in gardening. All you do is lay down a strip of seed tape and cover it over with some dirt, and you're in business. If you'd like some, you can get 10 feet of this amazing tape, a 49-cent value, free inside these specially marked boxes of Alpha Yard leaf bags, Alpha Outdoor Cleanup bags, and Alpha Trash bags. Alpha bags make yard and house cleaning up jobs easy. They're made of tough plastic with no bottom seam to split open. So pick up a box. They'll make your life easier and prettier. Welcome to the snack cake jungle. Snack cakes everywhere. Are there any with more than good taste? Any in that film, or my private life, for that matter. <laughs> and in this picture, it's also, it's a clean picture. And, and you know, we got a GP rating. We had to beg for it, but we got one. Mm -hmm. Now, how about your uh, play, uh, play it against them? Are they going to do that into a movie? Uh, I don't know. That was, that was purchased a long time ago by uh, 20th Century Fox, I believe, and I never heard about it again. It was, uh, play it against them was purchased before it opened on Broadway, and uh, I don't know, is you know? It, is it likely that you would play, sometimes the lead on Broadway does not play the lead in Hollywood? I have a feeling it's going to go that route. Um, Who do you see in your role? In play it against them? Yes. The role that I created yes. on stage? Oh, get ready for this. Um, let me think. That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I think there are a lot of people that could play me easily. Uh, Mahalia Jackson would be one. Um, see, I don't know. I, you know, I wrote the thing for me, uh, and uh, they, they have had trouble casting. We had trouble getting a replacement for me on Broadway at the time. What have you been doing? Why? why? I've been away. I was down in uh, Mobile, I have to say it right, Mobile, Alabama, for the Junior Miss Pageant last evening. Had a great time. I'm, I think I'm over... I'm over-entertained. Did you ever get that way? Me, there no. There's so many parties. I've been out. You know, they have great hospitality down there. They're great people. And they just turned the town over to me. They said, the town is yours. Yeah. And being a gregarious guy, I took it. Right. And what is the Miss... The, the junior miss, miss. The Junior uh, Miss. High school pension. seniors from all over the country. Fifty young ladies compete for this title. Mm -hmm. And they win a lot of prizes if they win. The girl won a $10,000 scholarship. And they usually pick a very, very sweet, very bright girl, and she represents the youth of America, and they were uh, 